Hi everyone, I'm going to do an art journal page today and I'm starting by taking pages out of, uh, this is a dictionary just and this is uh, just an old book and the reason I'm using these two is because I want two shades of paper. <laughs> you can uh, tea dye, coffee dye if you want to uh, have this kind of a brown paper and you don't have <laughs> and you don't have old uh, papers I'm just removing the white space I don't need it and I'm just going to tear parts of the pages and that will be the start of my page I'm using white glue with water that's the glue that I usually use when I'm a using paper napkins and it's also good for this it's two-thirds white glue one-third water so just putting it like this I'm not concerned that it's not covering the whole page from top to bottom I'm going to just play around and put all kinds of pieces until I'm satisfied with what I have so right now I'm just uh, trying to use, um, well, just trying to use the straight edges to align with the straight edges of my page. But on the inside of my page I want torn edges so there won't be any distinctive straight line on my background I like it uh, sometimes I do it like that sometimes I'm cutting and making everything uh, with straight lines this time I'm just going to do it like this so I'm just going to tear more pieces okay and if you don't have a straight line, it doesn't matter. You can always cut the, put it outside the edges and cut the excess. Whatever works for you. And it just, it really doesn't matter. The only thing I'm looking for right now is to have several uh, shades and of the paper in the background. And that's it. Otherwise, I really don't care. Need more. I'm going with the glue on top of the pages. Uh, it helps seal everything. It helps with consistency. The whole background would look the same. So that's why I'm going over with glue on top. And I'm using quite a lot of glue here. <laughs> So, let's see. Just overlaying some of the pieces. And here I'm going outside the page. And when it's dry, I'll just trim the excess. course if you have more a uh, more pages from a book with different colors it also you can use more than two colors that's what I just picked and that's what I'm using otherwise really doesn't matter I can also just put one a uh, from one a uh, page of a book and later on I can do some wash on top which pro maybe I will also do here I'm not sure yet so I'm just as I said just playing right now until I'm I will get something interesting I'm not concerned about 
the way the text goes. It can go sideways, it can go upside down, really doesn't matter to me. I've got some with numbers, which is good, just to have more interest in the back. Some of it is going to get covered and just pushed away into the background. This is just the start. Don't get attached to the pieces you've got. So now I'm just putting down pieces with the numbers so it would be interesting. Still got two pieces to cover here. Just by flipping the direction of the text, you create a lot of interest. Okay. So covered the whole thing now I want to do another layer and all kinds of ways to go about it I'm going to use a tissue paper that I stenciled before I've got a, a whole folder of tissue paper with either I stamped on it or stenciled some I printed that I got I, there is a video about all the ways that you can create your own uh, tissue paper. This is something that was in <clears throat> some packaging, some is stamped, some stenciled. You can even just use permanent markers to create your own design like this. So lots of options and I'm going to use already made a mess here i tore it a little bit but it doesn't matter so this is a tissue paper that i stenciled upon you can also use if you have all kinds of paper napkins a uh, with white backing and if I, you like the pattern so i'm just using today this tissue paper and i'm just putting it on i don't care if i have wrinkles I just because I like the texture so I'm even helping it a little bit to be with wrinkles and again now I'm just going over the tissue paper flattening the ridges and also sealing everything so it would be all with the same finish I'll wait for this to dry and then I will trim all the excess that I have. Okay, so that's just the start of my background. I'm thinking about doing some kind of wash on top of this to push back even a little bit more the details, the background and well we'll see first i need for everything to dry before i'm doing anything else so i'll be back okay so this is mostly dry and i've already cut the excess uh, paper that i had and now i'm taking this very light blue i'm acrylic paint i'm going to put it here and add some water i want to make a wash on the page I need it to be translucent a lot of ways to go about doing a wash one of them is acrylic paint with water others you can even use acrylic paint with baby wipe you can use watercolors anything that is translucent you can use inks you can even use gelatos with baby wipe so all kinds of ways to go about it I'm just using this time uh, the acrylic paint and I'm adding water 
just going to stir it until I don't have any blobs of paint and I'm going to use a piece of just regular a uh, bath sponge now I like to also put some water on the sponge I'm not not soaking weight just a little bit moist and now I'm taking it and I'm starting to go gently I'm also changing the direction I'm tapping it on the page so that I won't have a solid cover I don't know how much of it you can see because it's very light but if you used a um, darker color you could probably see that you have all kinds of in between because you're using a sponge that has a holes in it and it gives more to the overall texture I'm uh, adding a little bit of this I don't know turquoise just a little bit so it would be darker towards the edges not a uh, looking for a complete coverage just pushing back the background but still I am able to see the details that I've worked on the details on the of the printed pages and the details of the tissue paper I'm just pushing it back a little bit and it's better to start easy and work on adding when you want to push something more back to blur it more so now I'm just going over and I'm adding more to my edges because I don't care if the edges will be more covered I'm all, mostly looking for it but here I'm kept it a lighter yeah so of course if I want more I can add more subtracting is <laughs> a little bit more difficult so just uh, start with light and work on it if you need more okay so again this needs to be a uh, draw before I'm doing anything on top of it I'm still thinking of adding more paint to it but I'm not sure yet so I'm letting it dry and sometimes only when paint is dry you can see the end result and now I want to make some uh, focal point and I took this stencil this is one of mine that I made and I think I, I even found I've I've shown you in uh, other videos how I go making my stencils some are just freehand and some I take a photo of something that I like and from that I'm uh, doing the stencil and I found <laughs> the the photo that I used to make these flowers so just so you can see I can probably even align it here it is here is one a flower I don't remember which one here is another one so just from a photo this was from a pixabay.com and I will probably cut it and use it in some other art journal page because nothing goes to waste here so I'm going to use this stencil to create some focal point and I want a painty paper collage paper whatever uh, to create it from I was thinking I've got this paper this is a heavy weight paper that I've used brushes to experiment on there is a video how uh, I made this basically if I remember correctly this all the circles are 
uh, from gesso or white acrylic paint you create a resistance resist and then I just played with the brushes on top of it brushes are um, pig, uh, powder pigment very a uh, highly concentrated powder pigment and just I'm telling you just because <laughs> I just been asked uh, lately what it was when I used it in one of my videos let's move it it's in my way and now I'm just a uh, trying to find an interesting spot for the flower and I'm I want like two two colors to be on each flower so I'm just playing with with the placement until I'm finding something that appeals to me so very easy to go like this okay so I'm thinking this one will be nice a lot of orange here but a little bit of a purple down here and I'm going to take well just some black marker because right now I'm just tracing the color I can also use just a pencil I'm I'll use a pencil right now just to trace the overall shape of the flower so this is one and let's do another one maybe this one of course if I feel the need I can uh, later on after I'm uh, making the flower and fussy cutting it I can add a color or any uh, I can stamp on it I can do many things so let's see I want three flowers so let's go with another one here So in a stencil, the, the shapes are not connected and what I'm going to do is connect them back again. I don't know much, how much of it you can see, but it would be more apparent in a minute. So I'm just starting with one of the shapes of, uh, of the petal of the flowers and I like this kind of scribbly freehand style line so that's what I'm doing right now if you like very precise things you do you and do any kind of flower that you like. Okay. So I already got two and one more okay so now for the joy of fussy cutting I'm taking nail scissors right now I'm just taking the flower out so it would be easier
later I will just go with uh, an eraser and erase the pencil lines although they are hardly visible okay so just going to do again I'm going very loosely around the flower I found out that I like it better that way instead of stressing about being precise with the fussy cutting I'm just going around very free I'm using the curve of the scissors to my advantage that's why I'm using nail scissors they are also um, less thick than regular scissors so it's easier to work with like I'm I can only I can already see that this flower is a little bit like faded and not vibrant enough so I can trace another flower on my painty paper or I can just add some more color I will probably use watercolor to add some more vibrance to this one yeah here we go think I want to add some stamping it's either stamping or freehand doing some detailing on the petals so we'll see just to give it more interest and a little bit more whimsical okay so just need a little bit of <laughs> added color I'm, I've got this set of watercolors that I think I ordered on Amazon I'm not sure no brand no nothing and I'm just taking a brush with water and let's see I need some nice purpley color just to add more maybe this one a little bit a little bit of magenta I don't know I'm just playing it really doesn't matter I'm just adding a little bit a little bit of color yeah I think now it will work nicely so fixed problem fixed okay so I'm thinking I will probably want some leaves to go with the flowers and let's see if I've got something yeah another paper that I've done with the brochures maybe maybe I will use it I'm not sure yet First, I need to see it on my page before I'm doing anything else. So, let's see. Uh, just removing some of the pencil lines, the ones that are more visible. Okay, good enough. I think I will keep stamping, no stamping. Let's see. I think I've got. You know what? 
I can do it without a stamp just some of the petals I don't want all the petals with with detail just some of them so I can do it by hand by just putting dots circles whatever with a permanent pen just doing all kinds little dots big dots really doesn't matter um, as I said I'm going for more of a whimsical look okay so I'm just picking another um, petal and let's go again with the dots so some I'm giving it chicken pox <laughs> okay very easy so no stamps needed let's do this one also okay I like it I'm going to do the same thing with these two and let's see if my page is dry mostly let's see how it looks oh I, I already like it okay something like that yeah okay so i'm going to just do more of the chicken pox on <laughs> on the flowers and i'll be back okay so i'm back i've got my flowers i've got some uh, leaves here uh, that i'm not sure if i'm going to use yet but before I'm doing this, uh, I decided that I want my edges to be a little bit more darker. And just because I don't have any patience for more, more wet stuff on the page, I'm going to go with Distress Ink and a makeup sponge. I'm starting with this Mermaid Lagoon. I don't know if it would be dark enough, but I'm starting with it. If, if not, I'm uh, going to change for the darker color of blue. So I'm just going around the edges, maybe I will use both of them, go very uh, loosely with this and then add the darker color more towards the edges, while this one I'm not too careful and just going even into inside the page yeah switching to the darker one and doing mostly the edges I can also do it with the makeup sponge it doesn't have to be with a brush with the makeup brush now it's starting to take shape like I wanted it to look I was so careful not to go too dark at the beginning so now I'm working more of darkening the edges and I really like what's going on here yeah okay now I like it 
and I want to do some splattering which will cause another <laughs> again I will have to wait for everything to dry never mind so I've got some orange and I've got some yellow here I'm taking a fan brush with water just easier with a fan brush a little bit more water and I'm not careful I'm not gentle with it I'm just putting it on the page now I'm taking from the orange yeah so now for the difficult part waiting for it to dry <laughs> so I can put my flowers on I'll be back okay so this is dry I've glued my flowers I just want to do a uh, again very loosely with the same marker the stem for each one let's start with this one and again i'm doing it very freely and wobbly don't care not sure about the leaves yet so i'm first i'm doing this Let's see, do I need them, don't need them, I don't know, let's see, don't shout at me, I can't hear you, okay, yeah, going in <laughs> with leaves. <laughs> I've all overlapped the flowers a little bit and here I'm also there is an overlap between the flower and the leaf I think when you are doing something like that and even if it's a very very small overlap it looks a little bit more organic so but again up to you what you like okay so i've got the leaves i just feel like i want a little bit more detail i'm taking the yellow that i used to splatter and let's see i want like the things with the pollen i'm sorry i don't remember what it's called i'm just taking the acrylic paint and let's see I'm using a stylus, but I can even uh, use the end of a paintbrush like this. Here, I'm taking the end of a paintbrush and just making this. These little things with the pollen, which I don't know <laughs> what to call it okay i know it's a small detail but i think it's nice ed if you've got acrylic paints like mine that has a cap on them just open it and use this instead of uh, spilling a lot of paint just for this kind of thing. Here we go. Finished with this. A few lines. Although it's not that important, but nonetheless it's the little things sometimes 
just don't get your marker into the wet paint so many times I've ruined a good marker <laughs> by not being <laughs> patient yeah okay that's my page I'm not adding anything to it I like it so this is it so thank you for watching thank you for leaving me comments down below I'll be seeing you in my next video bye for now